Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. There is a new Russian military level hacking technique that I'm going to discuss in this video. I'm going to discuss the story that exposed it all. I'm going to discuss also key definitions, and I'm also going to discuss and basically tell you how to execute this attack, the tools to use, and the sequences to use the, the, the attacks, right? So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. Do not use this information illegally or unethically, right? Use this information ethically, responsibly. Do not hack systems that you don't have the explicit permission to hack, okay? So it's basically Russian fancy bear is the APT, right? And what is it, right? It's also known as APT-28 and is basically a Russian cyber espionage group believed to be associated with the Russian military intelligence agency, GRU. This group has been active since at least 2008 and is known for its sophisticated cyber attacks targeting a wide range of sectors, including government, military, aerospace, defense, energy, and media. You know, you know, so some of the key characteristics are the, you know, the affiliations and sponsorship, right? Fancy Bear is reportedly sponsored by the Russian government and is linked to the GRU unit 26165, which specializes in state sponsored cyber attacks. Hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you are being entertained and educated, hit that subscribe button and the like button right now. So the technique says the group employs advanced persistent threats, right? APTs, tactics such as spear phishing, uh, the use of zero day exploits and malware to infiltrate target systems. They often use spoofed websites for credential harvesting. Now, the tools, Fancy Bear utilizes a variety of proprietary tools, including X Agent, Remote Access Trojan, RAT, X Tunnel for, tun for network tunneling, and Compute Trace for persistence. Now, the notable activities is you know, the high profile attacks was fan Fancy Bear has been linked to several significant cyber incidents, including attacks on the Democratic National Committee during the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The German uh, Bundestag, hopefully I'm saying that right, Bundestag and France's TV5 Monde, uh, the global reach, their operations extend beyond Russia, targeting NATO aligned states and various organizations worldwide. They have been involved in campaigns against Eastern Europe governments, <laughs> you know, U.S. defense contractors and even Russian descendants, right? So they, they, they even going at each other, right? Now, the impact is Fancy Bear's activities have significant, you know, geopolitical implications as they often align with the strategic interests of the Russian government, right? Their, you know, operations have not only targeted polit political entities, but also sought to influence political events. Come on, you know, hackers are going to try to influence political events globally. Now, there is something in this attack called daisy chaining, right? And a daisy chaining attack is a sophisticated cybersecurity threat where attackers exploit multiple vulnerabilities or systems in sequence to achieve their ultimate goal. The, you know, this technique allows hackers to gain access to a target network or system by, a, you know, chaining together a series of exploits often moving from one compromised device or network to another. Now, the key characteristics in that regard is the sequential exploitation, right? Remember I took, you know, se sequences, right? Attackers use a series of steps exploiting vulnerabilities in multiple systems or devices to reach their target, you know, and now, you know, there's also the combination of techniques. It may involve a mix of horizontal and vertical privilege escalation, social engineering and exploitation of various services, including cloud based, you know, cloud based ones. You have obscured origin. The use of multiple networks and devices makes it harder to trace the attack back to its source. Uh, fancy, you know, so, you know, the fancy bear nearest neighbor attack uses, you know, a nearby Wi-Fi network, a sophisticated cyber espionage attack, right? Uh, that was, again, all kinds of Russian advanced persistent threat, you know, at the basically this at the onset of this russian ukraine war right and it's, it's it's to a certain regard it's a novel attack vector that a threat actor can use to remotely infiltrate the network of an organization far away by compromising a wi-fi network to close uh in, in a close proximity to it now fancy bear aka apt28 or forest blizzard is very it's very important that you know these names you know they basically breached a network of the u.s a u.s organization using this method which researchers at 
Velocity are calling the nearest neighbor attack. So the threat actor accomplished this by, again, daisy chaining their approach to compromise multiple organizations in close proximity to their intended target. Now, remember, that's why I gave you those definitions. So it makes sense, right? So, you know, pretty shortly now we're going to get into the making sense of it, right? So Tom Lancaster, you know, he... He wrote, basically, you know, he detailed the attack, right? This was done by a threat actor who was thousands of miles away and in an ocean apart from the victim, okay? There are four steps to execute a nearby Russian attack, a Russian neighbor Wi-Fi attack. Number one, password spraying tools. You can use MSOL spray. This tool can be used with the following commands. Peter, put that on the screen for the viewers, right? MSOL S spray. Uh, you know, that is right there. You have ruler. That's another tool that you can use for password spraying. That's the first thing you got to do is password spraying. Another tool is crack map exec also called as uh, CME, which is a tool that helps automate the security of large active directory networks to perform password spraying attacks with CME. We can use the next command. Peter put that on the screen now. So again, I'm going to talk about these tools that can execute password spraying attacks, right? Uh, you know, summer 18. Uh, curb curb root uh, can be used, you know, can be executed using the following commands. Peter, you're going to put these, keep, keep, keep putting these codes on the screen for them. Also, so I'm giving you these tools here. Use them responsibly. Okay. So we have the curb root, right? That that's one of them. Uh, we have Talon, T-A-L-O-N and Talon can be used with the following command. And Peter, you could put that on the screen for the viewers. Uh, next we have, uh, you know, number two, exploiting nearby networks. Okay. And you can do this using better cap after password sprayer exploit nearby networks so the new swiss army knife better cap is a newer s suite of network hacking tools for wi-fi bluetooth ipv4 and ipv6 it supports wi-fi sniffing and newer injection attacks such as pmkid based client list attacks on vulnerable wpa slash two ap's to obtain key material for cracking passwords it's available on windows linux and mac it's you know good news for mac users it also works on apple silicon so uh, and, and it was tested to ensure it has monitor mode and packet injection support. So just install it with homebrew by running brew install better cap. You can start better cap with the interface name specified with iFace. Then with the better cap console pops up, you can type in the Wi-Fi dot recon on to start sniffing packets and discovering APs to focus on one channel run Wi-Fi dot recon dot channel such as wifi.recon.channel1. By default, when BetterCap picks up any WPA handshakes, it will be saved to, you know, Peter, Peter put that on the screen for them. You can list the APs found by running the wifi.show and injection attacks such as associating the APs to obtain crackable PMKIDs can be done with wifi. You know, ASSOC, all for, you know, the found AP. So for other attacks, including deauthentication and rogue AP, check the, you know, the help page in the better caps Wi-Fi module. Number three, lateral movement and, you know, data exfiltration. Once a dual home system was compromised, the attackers used it as the bridge to connect to the target's enterprise Wi-Fi network. They moved laterally within the network using living off the land techniques. And some common PowerShell commands used in living off the land techniques are like invoke expression, i.e. X used to execute code or commands from a string or file. You have new object, which is often employed to create COM objects for interacting with the new, you know, or the Windows API. You have start process utilized to launch new processes, potentially for executing malicious payloads. Invoke web web requests used to download files or scripts from uh, remote servers, get WMI object employed to gather system information and potentially manipulate Windows management, Instra instrumentation, right, WMI, uh, set execution policy used to bypass script execution restrictions, uh, add MP preference can be used to add exclusions to Windows Defender, potentially bypassing antivirus uh, detection, Get content often used to read sensitive files or configuration data, 
out file employed to write data to files, potentially for exfiltration purposes, get process and stop process used to identify running processes and terminate them, potentially disabling security software. Now, the last one, number four of this you know, technique is exploitation of vulnerabilities. So the attackers also exploited known Microsoft Windows print spooler vulnerability, right? That's the CVE-2022-38028 for privilege escalation and data exfiltration. So tools that you can use in this regard is the, you know, intruder vulnerability scanner. This tool provides continuous internal scanning, helping to identify known vulnerabilities and emerging threats. Microsoft Defender Vulnerability Management, that's another one that you can use, which offers comprehensive risk-based vulnerability management. DISA slash SCAP scan tool, a free tool that provides benchmarks for local and remote scanning, offering insights into vulnerabilities and recommended fixes. So that's what I have for you today. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you were educated and entertained. See you on the next video.